guys, and welcome to another Mystery Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, where we explore mysterious video game stories, rumors, and hoaxes. It's that time of year again, when things get spooky, and we take our yearly look at another creepy pasta legend. I guess this is becoming a bit of an unsung yearly tradition at this point. Anyways, with the every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized craziness we had this last summer, I was thinking a creepypasta story about it would be perfect to read this year. As with most creepypastas, keep in mind this story is a bit out there. And with all of that said, dim the lights, boot up the N64, it's time to research the legend of the Super Mario 64 1995 beta. If you're anything like me, you'll love to research. You know, look things up, learn new things about your favorite gaming icons. If you're anything like me, you also love Super Mario 64. I was up late one night, and I had just finished playing Mario Galaxy. Ah, Nintendo. Growing up, I was always a huge fan of Mario. I loved his games and character, and I hated Sonic. Mario was my hero, and he could never do wrong. Now, I'm something you'd call a bit of a nerd, though personally, I prefer the term geek. I know just about every fact there is about Nintendo, every hat change, every time Donkey Kong picks up a barrel, but one thing I didn't know about was a game that I never truly understood. Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64. Mario 64 had a development that was troubled. Many people shifted around the departments to work on this game. Of course, something would go wrong. In hindsight, knowing what I know, it's crazy to me how little got out to the public. So it all started in 1995. Space World Expo, every Nintendo fan's dream. The 1995 build was one of the first times we saw Mario 64, and it should have been the last. See, unlike you, dear listener, I played that build. I actually recently found it online at an auction for a measly four cents. And let this be a warning for any Nintendo fan that feels fearless. If you ever somehow manage to get your hands on a copy of this 1995 build, don't play it. Anyways, when the copy that I ordered finally came in the mail, I rushed to boot it up. And at first, everything started up how I remembered it so long ago. Ah, Mario 64, what a great game that was. The camera, controlled by Lakitu, centering on Mario as he made his way out of that iconic green pipe, and followed him on his perilous journey through this once cherished and peaceful kingdom, now torn to bits and pieces by the fierce and merciless Bowser. I gotta say, I always loved Nintendo's alternative storytelling. The focus was never on Peach, Bowser, or Mario. The focus was on the environment, and that's where my troubles began, actually. The gameplay was still as I remembered it. Long jumps, triple jumps, yahoo, bing bings, wahoos, all that stuff. Goombas were still Goombas, and Thwomps were still Thwomps. That terrifying ear of the Thwomps still haunts my dreams. I smacked down King bob just as easily as I once did at the young, fresh age of eight years old. However, from the get-go, something seemed off. That Chain Chomp was just slightly off base. Koopa the Quick wasn't nearly as fast as I remembered, and he took a slightly different route too. Maybe my memory was just failing me, but I swore things were different the first time. And it wasn't just bob -omb Battlefield either. Every level felt slightly different, but I still had a great time. Mario is still Mario, I thought to myself, without thinking twice. Womp's Fortress, Cool Cool Mountain, Jolly Roger Bay, even the Secret Aquarium. The game was still just as fun as I remembered it being, though maybe nostalgia was just catching up to me as something did feel off. Then, I got to that level. Even as a kid, I never felt comfortable in Wet Dry World. That creepy skybox, the empty level design, not a single toad in sight. The level always unnerved me, and even more so now. Every time I played it, something felt different. Platforms were in different spots, different enemy behavior. It was all as if the game was learning. Nah, that's stupid. There's no way a game could be learning like that, especially a game that's like 25 years old. There's no way it was alive. So much of that level felt unfinished, like a beta level left in for some odd reason. There was one star I had a really rough time getting. It was almost as if the platforms to normally get up there weren't there. Eventually, I realized there must be something wrong with this level, and I gave up trying to get that star. I thought to myself, there are plenty stars in this game, why not just make up for that star in another stage? So off to Womp's Fortress I went, and that would be a decision I would instantly come to regret. I hopped into the painting, selected the only star I hadn't gotten yet, the Red Coin Star. 
Again, I realized something was wrong with this stage. The game had called for eight red coins, as it did in the final build. However, I looked high and low, but the eighth red coin could not be found anywhere in the map. I checked in every spot where the red coins were supposed to spawn, but it just wasn't in any of them. Surely this was some kind of mistake, right? I guess things like this should be expected, this being an earlier build of the game after all, but then I saw it. At the base of the course where Mario spawns in, there was a door. I didn't remember there being an interior to Womp's Fortress. Regardless, I walked through the door cautiously. Right off the bat, things seemed way off. This level was nothing akin to a normal level, nor did it show conventional signs of being incomplete, as would be expected from a typical beta build. What I saw was much more bizarre. Untextured floors, rooms unlit, I turned into Metal Mario as soon as I walked in, but no music cue played. In fact, there seemed to be an eerie lack of sound in this room. That's when things got really weird. Platforms started to move before my eyes as if compelled by some unseen thwomp under the level. Enemies spawned in and despawned before my eyes. Coins appeared and disappeared. It was so weird. Again, the game felt... alive. Almost as if interacting to my thoughts, a strange painting appeared on the wall. It was... a brain. Now, I consider myself an expert on Mario 64, but I have never seen this painting before. I cautiously jumped in. Expecting to be teleported to a new location, I heard it. <laughs> Boo's familiar laugh, but distorted. It sounded off, as if pitched down and pitched up at the same time. Then my game crashed. I quickly reset the game and reloaded my save. Everything was normal again. Must have been some freaky glitch left behind in this build. And for some reason, I had one more star than I had before resetting. Oh well, I thought to myself, time now to take on Bowser. I started walking up the stairs to the third Bowser stage, and then I saw him. Wario? He's not in this game. He was in Mario 64 DS, but never in the original. He also appeared only as a floating head, just like Mario's floating head on the title screen, but unlike that one, there was something very sinister about Wario here. The more I looked at him, the more he started to fade in, as if becoming real before my very eyes. In a fit of panic, I smashed the reset button, but it seemed a little too late. The next day, I decided my mind must have been playing tricks on me. So I decided to go take on Bowser one more time, and this time, the staircase was Wario-free. It was time to kill Bowser once and for all. So I played through that epic final stage, jammed out to Bowser's killer theme, then finally threw him off the stage. And yeah, I missed the bomb, so I was expecting Bowser to jump right back. Except this time, he didn't. <laughs> Boo's familiar laugh played once again, but this time a text box actually appeared. 1995, 07, 29. Thank you for playing, Nathan, the first few lines read. Nathan? How did it know my name? This was already freaky, but I pressed A diligently. Every copy of Mario 64 is personalized. In this build, you will find an early version of our personalization algorithm, not unlike the one in the final game, but a lot more active than that one. My name is not important. All you must know is I am a developer of this warped, twisted game. I have been trapped in this build for longer than you have been alive, and I feel that you may be next. You have already seen Wario. Your time is limited, friend. If you are still alive, do not distribute this build. Do not write about it. Do not share it online. Mario 64 is my biggest regret. Do not let it be yours. The text box closed, and the game faded to black. A faint W plastered on the screen, just barely visible, was all that remained. I quickly shut off the console, and ignoring the warnings that were just given to me, I started writing this story the next day. I have been seeing him in my dreams, Wario. He haunts me every waking moment. As the text box said, I don't have much time left. I leave you, dear listener, with one final warning. Don't play the 1995 build of Super Mario 64. And there you have it, another creepypasta for the books. Whether or not the 1995 beta legends like this are true or not, pretty sure they're not, the story was kind of out there, I really find stories like this and the whole mythos behind it fascinating. Anyways, if you enjoyed this reading, be sure to check out some of the other ones I've done, like last year's Sonic EXE creepypasta by clicking on the card right here. 
But as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.